My name is Christy Sundin. I'm a field agronomist for Pioneer. I'm based in Northeast North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about canola. We're going to talk about three things in canola. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to do stand counts or stand evaluations in canola using the hula hoop method and also a four foot length method. The second thing we're going to talk about is seed depth. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is flea beetles and cutworms. So now we're going to do stand count evaluations. And the first example on the stand count evaluation is we're going to measure out a four foot length. So one thing to be aware of, if you look at your card guys, it's going to tell you the formula for figuring out the number of plants per square foot based on a four foot length. So you're going to take the number of plants that you count in that four foot length, you're going to divide it by the row spacing and multiply that by three, and that will give you the number of plants per square foot. So traditionally, most growers are planting about our stand counts, the one thing I want you to make you aware of is that traditionally canola only has about a 50 to 70 percent survivability rate. So if we're getting 6.4 to 7.4 to 7.8 plants per square foot, when we seeded 10 seeds per square foot, we're actually doing pretty well. We're looking at anywhere between a 60 to 75 percent survivability rate on that. So now that we've finished our stand count evaluations, we're going to talk about seed depth. So seed depth becomes really important when you're out in a field and you're starting to look and see, okay, I've got some blank spots, I've got some areas that are not coming very well, what's going on? So some of the first things you're gonna do is you're gonna dig out your trowel. Don't go too big, guys. Stick with a smaller trowel, it makes it easier. And we're gonna dig down and we're gonna look. And be really gentle, because obviously you know that canola seeds are really small, so sometimes they're hard to find. And we're gonna look for a seed. See if we can find something down in here. Now you can tell that this ground has a little bit of compaction going on. And a lot of times we find that when we look at seed depth issues is we have compaction issues going on at the same time. Crusting also tends to happen with canola. Canola is a pretty small seed, so any amount of crusting can sometimes create issues and that plant doesn't make it up out of the ground. Traditionally, canola should be seeded right around a half to one inch deep. We start going deeper in that and it starts taxing that plant. It has a hard time pushing it up out of the ground. The other thing we want to be aware of when we're looking for seed depth is that sometimes if we go too deep, it might be something that's going on with our drill. I've had some instances where I've been called out to fields and that looked like they were an issue with flea beetles and it ended up being that we had a seed depth. The grower ended up putting it in at one and a half inches and the problem was is that his drill wasn't level. So he was in at one and a half inches where he desired to be on his mainframe, but his wings were going all the way down to two to two and a quarter inches deep. And it just didn't come up out of the ground. And the little bit that did come up out of the ground ended up having a flea beetle issue. Yeah, then you've got a plant that's already up and you're trying to determine how deep the grower went. You're gonna take from the very top of the root structure right here to where you start seeing color change on the plant. And you'll see that this grower had a seed depth of one inch, which is pretty much where we desire to be. So when you're looking at fields and you are having issues with emergence, number one thing that I would check to begin with is seed depth. So now we're gonna talk about flea beetles and cutworm. So when you're out scouting a field for flea beetles, the main thing you want to start out with is looking at the borders. So anything that was bordering canola the year before, so if a field across the road or right next door was canola, that's the kind of area you want to start with. 
And then anything that has a grass line or a fence line or anything like that, they tend to overwinter in those type of areas. So you wanna check along those lines too. So you're gonna see a field here. And if you look at the defoliation, you're gonna see the pitting on the cotyledons and then the feeding on the main leaves. Now, when you get to this point, guys, highly recommend that you get that sprayer going and get out and spraying for it. We've got some areas in this field that are a little bit worse and they're going at it pretty hard. If the weather stays the way it is, they're gonna keep chomping at these and they're gonna set those plants back. So we definitely wanna be spraying for flea beetles at this stage. If you look at your card, it's gonna give you a defoliation chart for you to look at, give you kind of an idea on where you need to be. As soon as you get to 20 to 25% defoliation, that's where you pull the trigger and you wanna start spraying. So the other thing we wanna look for is cutworm. Fields that are especially important when it comes to cutworm are fields that tend to be no-till or highly heavy trash fields. Um, not so common in canola, but you tend to find it in certain areas. So look for major blank spots, start digging in those areas. You especially want to start looking in the trashy areas. And when you find a cutworm, you're going to look at the size of that cutworm. So when you find a cutworm that's on the larger side, it's usually heading towards their feeding cycle and spraying from them really isn't going to do you a lot of good at that point in time. But if you find them on the smaller size, that's really when you want to be going after them. If you're going to be spraying for cutworms, you're going to want to do it in the evening, nine o'clock at night. That's when they're out. They feed at night. They burrow under during the day. So if you're out scouting during the day, you've got to be digging in the dirt to find them. So going into this next year, guys, I really want to encourage you to put Lumiderm on your canola seed going forward. Lumiderm is going to give you enhanced flea beetle control and it is going to give you cutworm control. So the last couple of years, flea beetles have been a major issue in canola. We struggle getting the crop up out of the ground and getting it going before those flea beetles set in. So if you want to give yourself and your growers a little additional protection going into the season, put the Lumiderm on the seed. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.